this sign forest in Watson Lake over to Whitehorse has been great too. Not as crazy as the Rocky Mountain day, but still kind of mountain. We saw snow too through the mountains. Really pretty here. So that was it, that sign. That's the big moment of truth and the decision to go the top of the World Highway or not and come through the Haines Junction and Destruction Bay. For us, without a doubt, our main goal is just to get to Alaska. We don't care about like the crazy roads or whatever. I mean, if there was like another BAMF up there or something, we would go see it, but we're not trying to drag this out any longer or see how crappy the roads can get. That is very, very low point for us. So, yep, if it says Fairbanks this way, we are going this way. And like I said earlier, this is way more scenic than I was anticipating. How beautiful up here. Well put. <laughs> well, I kind of thought it was going to be like really boring. big that one is. Look at that thing. Like right to the left of the... Yeah. Oh, oh my big. god, those people. Those people do not know. Um, these people have obviously not been to Yellowstone and don't know about bison safety. Oh my god, go back to your car. Oh no, they're not cows. Oh my god. Is that an iPad? I knew it. to finish a great day. We have this awesome boondocking spot next to a lake. We made it all the way to Destruction Bay from Watson Lake. Was not expecting that to happen. Champion right here. Nice job. I think that was nine hours of driving, but we really didn't stop for very long today. We even did our first mid-drive driver's change, which isn't the safest thing in the world, but if you're gonna go pro at driving an A-Class, you gotta do it. Swap it up, potty, back in the driver's seat, go, go, go. These are the things that you can do in the Yukon. All right, how about a nighttime beach walk? Pepper needs to go to the beach. Also, since it's 7.30, we could have lunch now, maybe. Twenty-five after eleven, and I know we've all seen people on TV or whatever who've gone up to Alaska, or I mean, even further north uh, in Alaska, where it's twenty-four hours of daylight. It's absolutely insane to be out at twenty after eleven, and it's this bright. And I know it's probably a little pixelated because it's on my uh, iPhone camera, but just you can go outside and see perfectly fine. Uh, it's really, really screwing up our sleep schedule. <laughs> I love it though, it's great. <laughs> no more joking around. We're coming up on another border crossing. <sighs> so we're preparing ourselves. I'll take care of this. And I'm gonna take some notes so that we're fully prepared to answer questions and get back into our native country. We have been in Canada for 17 days. We entered at, what is that place called? Sweetgrass. We have seven beers. 
that whiskey's gone, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. One lemon. This is, we're going back into the U.S. They're I not, don't care. They're not going to, like, be like, you can't come back. Really? Because it seems like border crossings are more like a job interview. These guys are going to be excited. Or they're going to be like, we need to inspect your vehicle. That's fine. We're okay. We have dog food. For us, for me at least, it's not like, woo, we're getting to Alaska. I'm like, well, let's see if we get in here. Maybe we'll sit out here for what? two weeks now. No way. They're going to probably throw me a ticker tape parade. This is kind of crazy going through a border crossing to come back into our own country, but this is the destination and it's so different from the lower 48. We've gone through many, so many border crossings, not on this trip, but you know, you're always going to something new. Alaska is something so, so new for us. It's just crazy that as a US citizen to come through this border, it's gonna be like welcome home, even though it's Alaska. There is no other country on earth that has so much diversity in topography. So it's really neat to be able to go to places like Alaska or Hawaii or Florida or Maine. And there's just so much Utah. that you get to. <laughs> what is it? Utah. Where? Utah. That's a lot of uh, different things you get to experience all within one country. So even if you don't have a passport, just uh, make sure you get out and explore the U.S. And then also get a passport so you can explore other places too. Shout out to T-Mobile. Oh yeah. So often trashed in the U.S. is not that great. T-Mobile saved our butts in Northern Canada. We haven't seen our good old friends AT&T slash Rogers in a long time. Since we got north of Banff, we've only had T-Mobile, which is on the Bell Network up here. And just when we get into towns at least, just screaming fast internet. But uh, AT&T, where yet? Not in Northern Canada. AT&T on our main phones has said no service. It hasn't just been like slow or anything. It has said no service since we left BAM. T-Mobile, even when we come through just little tiny places with like one little gas station, it'll pop on for like three bars of LTE for a minute and then we're good. What would we have done without T-Mobile? I just, we would have been stranded. The strategy of having, instead of like all our eggs in one basket. Oh, this is the border. Yeah, AT&T and T-Mobile worked out. Wait, are we ready? What are you talking about? Is this the border? Well, what else is, this is the border. Oh, it's an airport. This is totally the border. Okay, we must be leaving Canada. Bye, Canada. See ya. We have an ulcer. Okay, I have Pepper's rabies vaccine. I have a list of things that we have in the car. We both have our passports. Wait, it said US Customs 30 meters and we're not. Did we miss it? Was it that built? Did you have to go in? No, it's still... 30 miles? Maybe it's 30 miles. This is just no man's land. We're not in the U.S. yet. Where are we? No one knows. Da da da, and a bo bo da, and a la la la, and a bo bo bo, and do do da, and a bo da, and a here we go, and a this way, and a bo bo da, and a la la la. We made it back into the U.S. I guess whatever. That was another crappy border experience. It was like we were waiting for the light to turn green and it didn't and it was kind of like flashing between green and red so like Tim stopped plus we didn't know if we were too tall for the thing and then the guy who has, is having a terrible day like steps out of the booth and he's like we're like okay well it says stop so and then he's like where are you coming from and we're like Canada? Maybe I'm so nervous about these because Tim always has like absolutely the worst answer to all the questions. He's like, Canada? Well, it's a stupid question. I don't know where, where I slept last night with like my port of entry. I don't know. There was a gravel turnout about 470 kilometers back. Do you mean the last time we got gas where there was cell signal? He's like, where, where was the beginning of your trip? Like, I don't know, friggin' Florida? Like, what? When, when did we, where did we enter Canada? Uh, when was the last time we were in the States? How long were we in Canada? I don't know, those would be like more appropriate questions. I mean, no wonder I have anxiety on these things. It's like, 
Just yeah, the you, worst experience. You are setting the tone. Uh, like, I'm setting the tone because I feel like I have to pull the weight. You laughed and you're like, Canada? I mean, it's such it was a, a stupid question just because he's a border guard. Well, the last time that happened, we spent two weeks in northern Montana. Do you have a putt on board? Yes. Didn't care, like, the species. Well, I don't know. Yes, our, our pet alligator is in the back. My <laughs> pet doopy. Oh, someone's getting pulled over already. Well, Some welcome back to USA. Out.